Welcome back to the Least Professional channel on YouTube. What's up, Bear Heart Nation? So this video is going to be a little bit different. This is a special video. Throughout the month of April on Patreon, I was running a promotion. And through that promotion, anybody that signed up during the month of, of April, I would write a creative story about. So what I've done is I've written the creative stories for the two people who signed up in April. And I'm going to read those stories here tonight. It's going to be a little bit different of a video format. And I'm going to be adding in some different sound effects and different things to kind of make the stories come to life a little bit more. So, hope you guys enjoy. Without further ado, here is the Patreon stories. It was the middle of August, one of the hottest months in Arizona, and the sun was beating down over a building in the middle of a barren field. The building was small, only the size of a shed that a person might use to store gardening tools. And next to it, there was the remains of an old cemetery. Only a few small stones now protruded from the ground to mark where locals once buried their dead. But none of that mattered to the detective, who was now pulling his truck up to the door of the shed. Detective Bully climbed out of the blue pickup, his old gray boots leaving an impression in the soft gravel as he made his way over to the rough-looking doorway of the building. His mind was racing with what he might find inside. It had only been a few hours earlier that he had heard the strangest confession from any suspect he had ever interrogated, something that he couldn't believe and had a burning desire to see for himself. A recent series of strange murders had taken place in the small town that Bully had been living in for years. He had transferred in from a small town in Washington to become the lead detective in Tucson, a job that he had dreamed of since he had been stationed nearby when he was in the military. A lot of strange cases had come across his desk over the years, but this one involved the mutilation of not only people, but several animals in the area as well. Cows at ranches in the area, dogs, cats, and even a pet chinchilla had all been drained of blood by something, and several ranch hands had been torn apart. No one could figure out who, or what, was at the center of the brutal killings, but a lot of rumors had made their way around. Bully's favorite was the rumor about a cult of vampires living in a cave on the nearby Mount Lemon, but he couldn't bring himself to believe any of the outlandish theories. He was a man who needed some hard evidence, and to this point there hadn't been any, just a bunch of corpses with puncture marks and no blood. He had briefly entertained the idea that maybe the legendary Chupacabra was actually real, but that didn't pan out either. The case seemed doomed to fall into the unsolvable category, until two days ago, when a young woman walked into the station and asked to speak to the detective working the case. She introduced herself to him as Miss Thompson and said that she had information that would lead to finding the one responsible for the killings. As she told him her story, he went from being hopeful to skeptical to angry that she would waste his time. She told him that a local man who she had been dating had been dabbling in some weird science and that he had accidentally created a creature that looked like a cross between a human and a bat. Detective Bully was in the process of showing the woman out of the station and asking her not to come back when her boyfriend came through the door. Right away, Bully got a strange feeling just from looking at the guy, partially from the way he was dressed and partially because he was covered in blood. He was yelling at the woman and telling her that she had messed everything up as he walked toward her and the detective. Before he could do anything though, he was tackled by several officers and restrained. After a quick search, it was determined that the blood on the man was not his. The interrogation had been tense to say the least, the man not wanting to talk at first, but then opening up when confronted with a search warrant that was being executed on his house at that moment. The man would ultimately share the same story that Miss Thompson had relayed to Detective Bully. That combined with the tools, chemicals, and books gathered at his house would lead most in the department to think that the man had been behind the murders and animal mutilations all along and both the man and the woman were booked into custody until everything could be sorted out. One thing that the man said didn't sit right with Bully, though. The mention of a place where the creature was nesting. It was a spot he knew very well as a place where teens would go and dare each other to stay the night. A cemetery just outside of the town in the middle of the desert. It had long been abandoned, but there was an old shed out there that may have evidence that could tie the whole thing up in a nice bow. No one else was interested in checking the place out. So, the detective climbed in his pickup and headed out there. As he walked up to the shed door, Detective Bully wondered if the creature was really in there. He was a little worried. He didn't think that the man he had hired to make the thing would actually succeed, 
and now being so close to finding out made him wonder if it was actually worth the risk. If the creature was here, he would need to find a place to keep it until things settled down. Some place where no one would get hurt, but where he could easily bring it food and train it properly. His hands pressed up against the rough wooden door, and he heard a small growl from inside the building. A smile crossed his face as he pushed open the door. The sun hung low in the sky over the beautiful house that sat just outside of town. A gravel driveway ran through the trees that surrounded the house, and flowers filled the space around the front walkway. Though no one had lived in the house for years, it was clear that someone had been taking care of it. Nobody in the small town could remember the last inhabitants of the home, but they knew not to go anywhere near it. At a small cafe downtown, a young woman sipped from a cup of coffee with the name Foxfire written on the side of it while reading from an old book. Her brown hair was illuminated by the sunshine coming through the big window at the front of the shop. As she read, her mind wandered to what she had planned for the evening. After heading back to her hotel room to get her bag and supplies, she would be going to investigate a local legend surrounding an old abandoned house in the area. She knew from her research that the place hadn't had anyone living in it for a long time, and she also knew that there was nothing stopping anyone from going there. No fence, no sign saying to keep out, just some odd local legends that were enough to scare people into leaving it alone. After finishing her coffee, she closed her book and walked the three blocks back to her little hotel room. Gathering her bag of gear and flashlight, she left her room and went back down the flight of stairs to the ground level, out the front door, and out into the parking lot. She climbed into her red Pontiac Sunfire and drove off toward the house that sat on the outskirts of town, not knowing what the evening had in store for her. After parking a short distance away and walking up to the entry of the driveway, she stopped and looked around for a minute to take it all in. As she looked around, she couldn't help but notice a shoe lying in the middle of the driveway, just a few feet away from her. It was worn as if it had been there for a long time, but it looked really familiar. Maybe she couldn't remember because her mind had been so focused on getting here, and everything else was buried deep beneath the thoughts of this house. The closer she had gotten to this place, the stronger the pull was to get here. But now that she was here, there was a weight on her that she hadn't felt before. Nervousness? She had visited plenty of supposedly cursed places and had never felt nervous. What was different about this one? As her mind wandered, her right foot moved, seemingly with a mind of its own, taking the first step. Her left foot followed, and before she knew what was happening, she was walking at a rather brisk pace up the gravel road. As she walked, she began to feel rather lightheaded, as if she was floating. Faster and faster she moved, and the world seemed to be spinning all around her. Lights and colors like none she had ever seen filled the sky, and the sound of the birds chirping had been replaced with a soft breeze and the sound of people laughing and talking. She was somewhere familiar, but at the same time brand new. Just when she was starting to think something was terribly wrong, everything went black. She could hear the voices. They sounded very worried and they kept saying her name, asking, Foxfire, are you alright? Slowly, her eyes opened, the bright light causing her to wince as things came into focus. She was lying in a field with several people all crowded around her with the most concerned looks on their faces. One of the men was kneeling down next to her and asked if she felt that she could sit up. She nodded yes and he helped her to a sitting position. A rather chirky looking woman smiled at her and said, we thought you were down for good. The way that ball knocked you in the head. My goodness, dear, how are you feeling? Foxfire looked at the people around her, still not sure what to make of the situation. Where am I? Who are you? The man who had helped her up asked everyone to take a step back, looking at her with a worried look. My dear, do you not remember anything? Can you tell me your name? He asked. My name is Foxfire. The last thing I remember was that I was walking down a driveway toward a house that was supposed to be cursed. I started feeling lightheaded, then I passed out and woke up here. As she said this, she felt the pain in the back of her head where something had definitely struck her. Well, at least you remember your name, but you most certainly were not walking down the driveway. We've been here in the yard all day. The children were playing a game, and I'm afraid they got a little too rowdy and tossed their ball in the wrong direction. I was afraid that I had lost you. Climbing to her feet, Foxfire was able to take in her surroundings. It appeared she was at a 19th century garden party. This has to be a dream. She spoke her thoughts out loud as she walked through the crowd, 
over to the table where several glasses that she hoped were full of something strong were sitting and picked up a glass. As she did so, the man who had helped her up spoke again. Sweetheart, are you telling me that you don't remember me? What about our children? I passed out from the heat as I walked toward that old house. Yes, that has to be what happened. And now I'm dreaming, and soon I'll wake up and everything will be back to normal. Foxfire looked rather pleased with herself for figuring it out. As she stood there, smiling at the party guests, the man who was claiming to be her husband walked over and whispered something in the ear of another gentleman. The gentleman approached her and asked her to come with him. He said that she needed to lie down and that he was going to call the doctor to come and see her. As he led her inside, she just imagined what a funny story this would be to tell all of her friends when she finally woke up. As she laid down in the family room on the sofa, waiting for the doctor to arrive, she realized that she was missing a shoe. She couldn't remember where it had fallen off, but she felt that it couldn't have gotten very far. All right, I want to thank you all for watching. Like I said, this was a video done for the patron, patrons that signed up in April. From time to time, I'm going to run little things like this. And I, I enjoy the creative process and the creative story writing stuff. So if you guys enjoy this video, hit the like button and uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I uh, appreciate you guys. I appreciate everybody out there who's watching and everybody who is subscribed, watches my videos, whether you're a Patreon or not, I really appreciate you guys' your all support. That being said, that's all I got for you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Everybody have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.